Fallout 3 gives you a massive number of options in how you can play the game and traverse the wasteland of Washington, D.C. Everything from stealth to running and gunning, fighting with your fist to using miniature nuclear options, nearly everything is an option. However, as fun as it is to launch a nuke into a behemoth's face, or make people twice their weight in lead, nothing quite compares to the options you're presented with when it comes to custom weapons. Your options of attack with weapons you can build are... Well, they're... Uh, they range from awesome... ...to downright obscure. Nonetheless, though, even if it's odd, there's nothing quite like killing someone with an old Nuka-Cola bar. Building custom weapons is the only way to make deadly use of the obscure ammo you find in your travels, and a great way to make money. The only downside is finding and carrying around all the junk you need to make a weapon until you find a workbench. For that reason alone, it's in your best interests to stash useful junk in your house at Megaton or at your suite in Tenpenny Tower. In order to build a custom weapon, you first need at least one set of schematics or blueprints. These can be found all over the wastes, and are typically found in three ways. They're given as quest rewards, bought off vendors, or simply found lying in specific places. When it comes to schematics, there's a critical thing to keep in mind. For every extra set you pick up, the weapon it details will be in better condition whenever it's created. It's a questionable philosophy to only build weapons until you gain all three sets of blueprints, but it's a reasonable rule to follow whenever you make explosives. The reason for this is because with every extra set of schematics you pick up for an exploding weapon, the number of units you make off of a single set of parts increases. Confused? Here's a good example. Nuka grenades are the most powerful explosives in the game, but also some of the most limited because there are only so many Nuka-Cola quantums in the entirety of the capital wastes. So normally, with a single set of parts, including one quantum, you would make a single Nuka grenade. But with two sets of blueprints, you make two grenades off of one quantum, and you make three grenades if you have three sets of schematics. Seeming a bit more pleasing? As a rule of thumb, whenever you're thinking of making any type of explosive weapon, you should wait until you have at least two sets of schematics so your parts go the extra mile. There's one additional thing to mention if you have the downloadable content Broken Steel installed. With this expandable content, your level cap is raised to 30, and you have access to a level 26 perk called Warmonger. The Warmonger perk makes you an expert at building all the custom weapons without needing a single set of schematics or blueprints. This perk is a bit of a great choice though, since at level 26, you could have found all the schematics by simply playing the game or following this guide. It's still not a bad choice though, since it allows you to bypass some uncomfortable choices and gets around a conflict of interests with the Nuka Grenade schematics. Now that we're past the introductory mumbo jumbo, we can get down to where to find all the blueprints in the game. We'll start off with the most obscure of all the weapons, the Rock It Launcher. This weapon is a good one to use in the beginning of the game whenever you have a lack of ammo. The Rocket Launcher allows you to load up any junk you find and shoot it at your target. The heavier the object, the more damage you do. The schematics for this little wonder, or should I say massive spectacle, are in four locations. The first is sold by Moira Brown at Crater Side Supply in Megaton. It may not be cheap to buy, but nonetheless it can pay off quickly. The second is bought off the wandering merchant Crazy Wolfgang. You can find him outside of any major settlement, like Megaton, Tenpenny Tower, Paradise Falls, Rivet City, and Canterbury Commons. If you wait outside any one of these settlements for three hours at a time, a trader should eventually show up, and one of them will be Wolfgang sooner or later. Like Moira though, he doesn't sell the schematics for cheap. The third set can be found on the third floor of the Rivet City Bridge Tower in the Armory. If you can't pick the very hard lock, you can pickpocket Hargraves for the key. Be warned though, there will be a turret in your face whenever you enter the room. The final and last set can be found in Vault 101 during the quest Trouble on the Homefront. When you return to the vault, you can find them in your father's old office, where Andy, the Mr. Handy Robot is. The blueprints are in a wall safe that's hidden behind the framed Bible verse your mother loved so much. Next up is the dart gun, which is mainly a stealth weapon and best used for preemptive attacks. The dart gun does a very minimal amount of damage, and can only hold and shoot one dart before being reloaded. However, it poisons your foes and forces them to walk instead of run, making it a weapon of choice against enemies such as death claws and the like. Also, the dart gun is the only 100% silent weapon in the game. The schematics for the dart gun are found in three locations. The first is located at the MDPL05 power station, located in the top left corner of the map. 
not far from the Raven Rock bunker. The schematics are sitting next to the remains of a now skeletal technician. The second set is a reward for completing the quest Head of State. After helping the slaves from the Temple of the Union get to the Lincoln Memorial, Hannibal Hamlin will reward you with the blueprints. The last set is sold by Linda Montenegro at Tenpenny Tower in the south. Just as with all other traders, she doesn't let them go for anything but a pretty penny. Also note that if you didn't blow up Megaton, you have to pay 100 caps to get inside of Tenpenny Tower. Now there's the Bottle Cap Mine, which does the most damage out of any triggered explosive in the game. The Bottle Cap Mine is the ultimate in options you have for setting traps. It will instantly kill almost anything that sets it off, so long as they get close enough to it before it explodes. The Bottle Cap Mine is also one of the two buildable weapons that's best made after you get two or more sets of blueprints. As I said before, the number of schematics you have is proportionate to the number of explosive weapons you will make off of one set of parts. The blueprints can be found in four places. The first being sold by Knickknack at the souvenir shop in Little Lamplight, which is found on the western border of the Wastes. You can get into Little Lamplight in one of three ways. You can help the child slaves escape from Paradise Falls, win a speech challenge with McGrady, or you can use the Child at Heart perk to persuade McGrady to let you in. The second set is found in Jacko's Pop and Gas in the southwest corner of the map, roughly northwest of Tenpenny Tower. The third set is a reward for completing the minefield part of the Wasteland Survival Guide quest chain. Only if you bring Moira back a landmine will she give you the schematics. And looking at this landmine, it gives me an idea. It's a terrible device that does terrible things, of course, but it's easy to make your own too. The last set is a reward for telling the Tenpenny Tower resident, Dashwood, about the fate of his ex-manservant, Argyle. In order for this to work, the ghoul problem at Tenpenny Tower has to be unresolved, because you have to get Dashwood to talk about his old friend. If you solve the problem at all, no matter what side you choose, Dashwood won't talk about Argyle at all. Before you can tell Dashwood about his friend's whereabouts, though, you need to find Argyle, who is located in Rockopolis. Rockopolis is a hidden location, more west than south of Smith Casey's garage. Also, it should be mentioned that inside of Rockopolis, you can find the unarmed bobblehead collectible. I'd like to return your kindness. Here, take this key. It unlocks my safe. Lots of stuff in there I'll never use again. My adventuring days are over. Now unfortunately, there's too much additional content to cover, and not enough time, so I'll have to stop here. Don't worry though, the rest will be covered in the second part of the custom weapon guide from Visage Guys and Kerosene Dreams.